And welcome back, everyone. The political crisis rocking River State that's majorly between former governor, now FCT Minister Yesa Mwike, and incumbent governor Simina Lai Fubara is not showing any signs of abating. Week after week, faction loyal to either men throw word arrows at each other with the aim of battling for control and supremacy in the state. Tonight, let's get some perspective from the governor's namesake, uh, Caleb Fubara. He's a writer and political affairs analyst. He joins me now virtually from River State. Good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening. Um, there is now a twist in, in, in the, what's going on in River State. We're now hearing from also the former governor, uh, Peter Odili. What's your take on the recent statement made by the former governor, Peter Odili, declaring um, Governor Simina Lai Fubara as the leader of the, of the PDP in River State, um, at the same time, we're also seeing um, Honorable Meka Woke and Chidi Lloyd declare for Mark Governor Yesom Wiki as the leader. Well, ordinarily, the statements from the former governor, who more or less is the father of reverse politics today, uh, if you ask me, I would say it's somewhat overdue. But you see, at some point, Elders can always step in to tell the younger one that uh, and had truth. It doesn't matter what anyone wants to say. The only reason why Odeli himself was the leader of PDP at that time, when he was governor, was simply because he was the man in the saddle. At the point Odeli left, Amechi became the governor of the state. It was something you don't argue. It naturally fell on him. Wike came and just ruined the last eight years. I'm sure this issue of whoever is the leader, PDP as a party has it as a convention. It's just like you have the president today, and you want to say you are the leader of the party. So it's a statement that is quite timeless. But if you ask me, a little overdue. But whichever way, the fact that the man whom everybody seems to be ascribing their political milestone to has come to say, this is what it is. The man who is the governor of the state is the leader of the party in the state. Initially, what we saw was um, former governor Peter, because you are saying that, look, his, his statement is long overdue. But what we saw was that he, he played a, a mediatory and reconciliatory role uh, between Wiki and Fubara, especially at that meeting um, at the presidential villa, where we understand that that peace accord or peace agreement was signed. But the, the fact that this crisis has now prolonged to the point that there is now some sort of schism between the former governor, Odili, and Wiki, um, what is responsible for the current escalation of the crisis? All this while, like I said, Old League has always ensured that the river state he is living in now as an elder statesman enjoys some level of peace. Old League, like you rightly mentioned, tried to settle this matter in his own way. It's as simple as, oh, the former governor, who is now the FCT minister, you must recognize the fact that you are no longer the king. There is no denying anywhere that Barista Yesun Wike, the former governor of River State, was the greatest human factor in the making of Simlala Ekopara as governor of River State. That we acknowledge. Nobody argues that. But the truth of the matter is, at the point that you have met the king, you allow him to reign. You don't suffocate him. Like you said, from behind the scene, as an elder, he did his best. But since the thing keeps reoccurring, somebody has to speak up. And so he has taken it upon himself to make that declaration so that the world will hear that the man who is the leader of PDP in River State is the governor of the state. Mm. 
So there are some that will say, uh, Mr. Fubara, will, uh, some will say, look, and you, you also just attested to, to the fact that um, the former governor, Yeso Mwike, midwifed the emergence of Fubara as the governor of River State. Um, and of which we've also heard Governor Fubara, you know, consistently acknowledging Wiki, you know, as, you know, his Oga in quotes, uh, which is, you know, Oga here would mean like a boss. Uh, wouldn't that be wrong to say that, look, if somebody midwifed your, your emergence as governor, um, wisdom and humility would demand that you, you recognize him as a leader of your party? It is not in contention that Wiki assisted him to become governor. There's no two ways about that. But the issue in contention here, see, the man called Wiki, that is the FCT minister, was smart enough to recount this whole thing. You see, the greatest thing that has happened to Wiki, Wiki should thank God that he was able to make Fubara his successor. In fact, it should be grateful to God. Because you see, all these other people who are now shouting, making all the noise, one, give them one day in government house, and they will not take the list of what Fubara had to endure within five months. Till today, the man hasn't still told anybody what it is. The only question he asked is, what is my offense? And as we're talking, nobody has said, these and these are the things you have done that have run foul of the Constitution. Because it is not a banana republic. It's not about my ego. It's not about how you feel. It's about a system, an organized system, that is run on authority. You derive that power of becoming the governor from the Constitution. And the Constitution clearly spells out what it takes, the process for which a governor can be impeached. Right? So if all those things are already in place, and then you put a man in office as a governor, you will allow him. The truth of the matter is, Wike, as a smart politician, was able to recount the story 48 hours after what happened here on the 31st of October. We didn't hear from Wike. But when Wike came up, Wike started telling the world about structure. And you will ask yourself, is, like, is it like an estate that Fubara now wants to take from Wike, his former boss? Or are we talking about human beings who can be part of the party today and choose to go to some other party? What will even bring us to talk about structure five months after election? Just barely five months in office. We're not talking of any election. What does anybody even need to structure for at the time? So structure was just weakest labor way of setting his own side. But we all know that the man virtually tried to activate the governor. The governor was more or less in tetas. Right? I am telling you that all these ones that are his apologies today, not one of them will stay in that office 24 hours and take the list of what Kubara took from him. But that doesn't mean that we will just abandon history and make it look like, oh, Wike did not play any role. Wike, like I said, was the greatest human factor that God used in making Kubara governor. But it is not also within his rights to say on which side of the bed the governor should wake. That would be like asking for too much. Imagine a situation where virtually all the commissioners from what we have seen so far in the cabinet were nominated by Wiki. And so because of that, he could tell them to resign. The same people who said they resigned on personal grounds we are the same people who, oh, because the tide has changed, all of them go back. So everything that is happening in River State, that must happen in River State, will be at the whim and caprice of one man. That's the problem here. Let's say you are the kingmaker, but you must also recognize that somebody is the king. It could be your son, your biological son, it could be your younger brother. 
but you must recognize that he is the king. Fubara is the best thing that has happened to Wike because Wike himself knows. That was why it was very difficult for him to decide. Do you know that 48 hours to the time, PDP's primary, the man was still thinking if he was doing the best thing because he knew what he has done with power. He is a man who said he wants 100% loyalty from his commissioners. Now you have commissioners whom you've appointed, you've nominated to work with a man, and then their own loyalty is with you. Uh, let, let's let's talk about let, let's talk about those commissioners and and those you know who are working in this government in River State. Um, there are reports that during the week that um, Governor Fubar had publicly stated that some local government chairmen in the state uh, are showing him some level of disrespect. Um, he's also been challenged by a commissioner in his cabinet as well. What exactly is stopping the governor from calling these men, um, are putting his house, calling these men out and putting his house in order? That is where you see a man with majority. You will see a man with the right presence of mind to occupy that exalted office. You see a man who can absorb, right? The governor could just decide to do those things you have asked me why he hasn't done them. Well, this is a man who has conscience. He knows where the problem is coming from. He knows that whoever that is even insulting him is insulting him like a puppet that is on string and somebody is pulling the string from somewhere. So it isn't even about these people. Okay, now it's a case of, oh, he said the governor did not sack the commissioner, if you remember. The commissioners resigned. Now, tell me how those men who said they resigned, if they have principle, if they have honor, will now say, oh, because there was a trust. And then they are coming back to work. The question is, in fact, this is what led to my writing that open letter to Mr. President. It's as simple as accepting that these things are not working. But it must not come from the governor. The governor still respects the fact that we all worked, and then I am in office. These are the people my boss nominated to work with me. For him, it's still like that. Only the FCT minister knows his problem with the sitting governor. The distractions, do you know that River State today would have been like what it used to be, 232%, if the governor had tried to assert himself as governor of the state. He takes all the mock slinging because he believes that what matters most is the peace and security of river states. Mm. And, and, and let's stay there. That, that uh, you said what, what he seems, he seems uh, he believes that what matters the most is the peace and security of River State. Um, let's now talk about the achievements of the governor since he came um, to, to office. Well. If you ask me, I will say the governor's greatest achievement is the fact that he has refused to fall into his ex-boss's trap. Because we can simply want to call him out. Right? And, and I mean, and that, that, that cannot... Mr. No, 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 just a minute, Mr. Mr. Fubara. That, that cannot be... Yeah. Um, and no, I know, no. and I understand that in your perspective, just a minute, I understand that in your perspective, okay. that's an achievement, but I'm talking about what has he done um, for am, the people of the state in I terms of the infrastructure. First, first and foremost, that should be counted as his greatest achievement, that people's people are still sleeping with their eyes disclosed, with him as the chief security officer of the state. One. As he came into office, he was barely two weeks in office when he signed a project that has been on the drawing board for over 16 years, a 200 billion naira for Sakot Ring Road to decongest traffic, a project that is linking six local governments. It has never happened before. It's happening the first time. That project from what we hear was conceived under the ill-fated Dominion's government. From that time up through 
all through the eight years of Ambechi, down to weakest eight years. Nobody talked about it because of the Humongo son involved in carrying out that project. But Fubara, because it is one project that river people need, he went into it. And as I'm talking to you, work is going on. Apart from that, the governor, with all the distractions, is currently reviving the Songhai farm. I don't know if you've heard of this Songhai farm that was left moribund all this while since the Ambechi era. The governor is presently building a 10-kilometer road that is linking in Dorama, where they call it Dorama, Agboncha, Oyibo, Ebubu, to the east-west road. The governor, as I speak with you, was one of the first persons to roll out buses as palliative the moment we had this uh, removal of subsidy regime. As I speak with you, the governor, as he got into office, did what three cons uh, successive administrations did not do. Mm. Paid off, he has started paying the arrears of gratuities of people who have retired some 10, 15 years back. Right, Mr. Fubara, let, let me come in here um, because you, okay. you know you would. I'm sure you like you know that TVC has a lot of presence in, in River State. And we, and we cover. We've done extensive documentary um, on River State, exactly. and that project you, you mentioned earlier, saying that neither um, neither former governor um, Wiki or his predecessor did you know that project. You know we know that that project was started and uh, you know by um, by the Wiki administration and completed by and commissioned by um, the Fubara administration. But I also wanted to ask you about the, the House of Assembly. What, what, just, just a what minute, project? please. Hold on. Okay. I also wanted to ask you about the, the House of Assembly, which is what a lot of people, um, the, the challenge that a lot of people have. The fact that that House of Assembly was demolished, and people are, are thinking, look, you demolished a national House of Assembly, and now you have to build it back. And that perhaps, you know, it, it's, it just amounts to waste. It, it does not amount to waste because, first and foremost, that House of Assembly, from what we know, has some uh, structural problem. But that's not even it. Let's face it. The Assembly was blown, that is, the Chambers was blown on the 31st day of the, the 30th night of October. First thing, the following morning, this is just look at this nexus. Those who bombed the assembly were not apprehended, even when the place is just opposite the place, the River State headquarters of the police. But do you know what? About 6 a.m., let's assume that somebody threw a bomb here, and then you don't know about it. Will you be the next first person to move in there? But by 6 a.m. the next day, these assembly members that are loyal to Wiki were at that same assembly that was formed the previous evening. Before you could get any reports about it. Think about that. You didn't know what happened. An assembly was formed. What will give you the courage to go into that assembly the next morning? before dawn, to say you are sitting because you want to evict somebody, right? The man does know the logic that people naturally will want to believe that, oh, because it is where the man was supposed to be in peace. So the people who bombed the assembly, that was not the issue. That was not what happened. Those who bombed the assembly were those people who still had the courage to go into that assembly even before dawn, right? But having formed the assembly, there must be that chamber, that legislative chamber in River State must be there. And it is up to the government of the day to rebuild that place. That was not the first time 
The other time that assembly had similar problem, Wike was at the center of it. If you remember, mm, in 2013, I, 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 that I, I, assembly... I will, not, I will not let you make those kind of speculations. Um, no, 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 no. We will go by just assembly, a minute, Mr. No. Fubara. I, I'm, I'm winding down now. We will, always, we will always rely on police investigation and reports before we, we make any claims. And so, for that reason, I'm out of time, actually. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time and analysis. Um, writer and political affairs analyst, um, Fubara, thank you for your time.